Pat's Two Cents, reading from Jude. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterwards, destroyed them that believed not. And the angels that kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities of them like manner, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Now, for those of you who don't know what strange flesh means, it means homosexuality. What? Yes. Moving right along. So even in the New Testament, that has never been an acceptable form of life. Not by God. By man, yes, but not by God. Had to throw in Pat's two cents on that one. Verse 8, likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beasts in those things, they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Cory. These are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about with winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness for ever. That's stopping at verse 13 for a minute. Listen, you guys. The one thing, I've read that verse a lot of times, but what's jumping out at me right now, this is what we deal with in this day and age, whether we're at work, whether we're at church, whether we're at home behind closed doors. We are dealing with empty people who are full of of blasphemous disrespect to God and the things of God. Now, we wonder why things are so chaotic. We were just talking earlier, and I, I didn't say anything because this was lined up with this, uh, with this chapter. I very seldom am led to preach from the book of Jude, which is one chapter, by the way. But it totally describes the spiritual emotional, psychological condition of mankind in society in these last days. There is no respect for God. There is no respect for people. There is no respect for character, for integrity. There is no respect for how we treat people. What I love about verse 12, it says these are spots in your feast of charity. The feast of charity is in your gathering of love. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds, they are without water. Do you know what that means? When you look at a cloud and it looks like it's going to rain and we tease and say, oh, they're just selling wolf tickets. It ain't going to rain. No, I mean, all the clouds 
no rain. In other words, you got all this gathered together and you have no substance. You have nothing to offer. You're empty. It, it, it's, it's like living your life out, selling wolf tickets every day. You have nothing. You're about nothing. Your, your, your aim is about nothing. You have no goals. You have no desire to do anything right. You're just empty. All right. So these are clouds without water. Carried about of winds. In other words, the winds can blow those clouds any way they want because these people have no direction. They have no foundation. They have no, I mean, they have nothing, no anchor holding them in place. No reason. Trees whose fruit withereth. In other words, you got people, again, who are about nothing. They, they, they don't have any any life in them. They don't have anything to offer without fruit, twice dead. Now that's deep to say that something's twice dead. Plucked up by the roots. There are no roots. There's nothing holding them in place. They can just go with the wind and they're, they're, they're whipping over here and whipping over there and they're, putting out this fire, putting out that fire. They don't have any direction. They don't have any goals. They don't have any standards. Think about that. They don't have any strength. There's, there's nothing there worth anything. And they're pushing themselves on people, trying to get everybody on their side. Raging, verse 13, raging waves of the sea foaming out their own shame. Do you notice how people who are about nothing, who live a filthy, shameful life, they're almost boastful about it. They, wanna, they want it to rub off on you. They want you to act just like them, talk just like them, have no standards just like them. They want you to join in on the festivities of their nothingness. That's the society we're in now. Wandering stars. Now, you know, that's deep to say a star is wandering. These stars are, they know their place. To whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. See, there are people out there that love the darkness, y'all. They're out there doing whatever dastardly deed they can get away with. The, the weirder it is, they like it. The freakier, they call themselves freaky deeks. They can freak out. Remember that old song, Freak Out? Well, see, that was a time when they were talking about couples who were, who were swapping couples. And, and, and I mean, you're in this lifestyle where older people want to have sex with kids. And I mean, we're talking pedophiles. We're talking homosexuality. We're talking uh, incest. They're brothers and sisters that are screwing each other left and right, and they don't see anything wrong with it. You got parents screwing their kids and, and, and kids being molested by relatives. And this stuff is going haywire, y'all. This world is spinning out of control. And everybody likes it that way. You know, there are times when I'm watching a movie. I like watching movies. But the minute I see a male and a male looking like they're getting ready to connect, I'm off to the next movie. I don't even want to see what the rest of it has to say. You know why? I don't want to entertain what goes diametrically opposed to God's ways. It's a turn off to me. But see, for some of you, you get turned on. You're enticed. You may not like it but you're glued to the two. See, I, I, I can't allow myself. The Lord made me holy. I'm not righteous in my own right. The Lord, I'm only holy in God. I'm righteous in God. So whatever this world has to offer, whatever demonic mess this world has to give, whatever they want to push in your face and shove down your throat, 
Baby, you don't have to swallow it. You can spit it out and keep it moving. See, the devil will do everything he can. He will entice you with curiosity. He will, he will entice you to hook up with this person and that person. And, 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 and you, you're drawn to people not realizing they are only a sign to poison and contaminate your life. And you're sitting there allowing it. I think what happens is when you live in a, in a life full of stench, you get used to it. You get dummy down. You become numb to the things that go against God's ways. And I'm going to give you an example. This is how our lives are filled with these kind of people. I'm going to read verse 16 because that is what is jumping out at me right now. And then I'm going to share an example with you. Verse 16. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouth speak great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. I'm stopping at verse 21 right now. Listen to this example I mentioned a minute ago. Years ago, when I was in the 10th grade and we were taken, uh, we were in the choir and we were taken to Massachusetts somewhere. And we had to, different ones of us had to sleep in these families' homes because we were there for two or three days. Now, here's the part that got me. As soon, okay, now you're going to laugh when I say this, but it was a racial thing, even though they would never admit it. All the white kids were taken to these beautiful homes, and they stayed with families who were well off. All the black kids were taken on the other side of the cow patch. We were all, there wasn't many of us. We were all on the same block with different neighbors. As soon as we were a half a mile away from the place, the stench, listen, the stench was so thick. And the closer we got, it got to the point where it actually would stop you from breathing. It stunk so bad. And I kept saying, what is that smell? What is that smell? I didn't know about a cow patch. I was born in Brooklyn. I didn't know about that stuff. I said, what is that smell? It just smelled like manure on top of manure, manure fermented, manure cooked, manure boiled. It was horrible. And it was so intense that our breath would be stopped. I mean, we, we could, you could almost gag off of it. It was so thick. <laughs> it was foul, y'all. Now, after going through all that and then parking in front of these people's homes, they opened the door and came out to greet us. And I couldn't stop it. I just kept saying, what is that smell? What is that smell? You know what they asked me? This was a black family because we were in the black neighborhood where it stunk. <laughs> they said, what smell? See, some of you have lived in this society so long. You have no idea how foul it stinks. You have no idea the stench that goes up to God's nostrils. You have no idea how nasty 
this world's standards have become. Why? You lived it so long. You've been around it so long. You have fed off its entertainment so long. You have been around people that have been shoving it down your throat so long that you're dummied down. When you're around something long enough, the smell loses its impact. And you get to a point where you no longer smell it. This family didn't even smell it. It was all in their house. Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. I, when I slept, I was putting stuff all over my nose, spraying it with cologne so I could breathe without having my breath stopped from the stench. They asked me, what smell? That's how long they had been in it. How long have you been yielded to the stench of this world to the point where it doesn't bother you anymore? When you get to the point where, oh, well, you know, we got to let live and let live. No, baby. What you're doing is falling for the lies of this world. You're lowering the bar. We have to be careful, you know, like we were talking earlier. Uh, when when I listen to, to what each one had to say, you can tell the sins of this world, it bothers them. But for some of you out there on the other side of the screen, I can't see you. But listen, watch how you lower your standards. Watch what you yield into. Watch what you turn a blind eye to and a deaf ear to. Be careful about that. Because if you are not speaking up against it, your kids will accept it. And then when your kids start turning into these monsters and you're wondering how did that happen, your silence to them was consent. Your silence to them was acceptance of the changes that are taking place in society. Be very careful to stand up for what's right. This is for all of us, y'all. Be very careful to be quick to express your disdain or your disassociation. Do not join in to be accepted by the crowd. Do not make your peace with things so that everybody likes you. Because when you get to that point, what you are doing is taking Jesus off of the throne and placing the world in his place. Be careful about how you yield and how you compromise. What does Romans 12 say? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now listen. This is coming to my mind right now. I'm going to share it with you. When I was in cosmetology school, this one woman, she cussed like a sailor. Well, I was raised in a house full of cussing, so that wasn't new to me. But the thing that kept rubbing me the wrong way was GD this and GD that, GD this and GD that. She was F and everything and SHIT and everything. And she was just going off the deep end with the cuss words. But I had to ask her one day. I said, sweetheart. And I, she was doing it publicly, so I asked her publicly. I said, I know that you have the freedom of speech. I get that. And I know I'm not your mother and I'm not your priest. I get that. But would you just do me a favor? Would you please leave my father's name out of your cussing? It's very offensive to me. 
when you say the name GD, you are offending me because you're taking my father's name in vain. When was the last time you asked somebody to stop using God's name in vain? When was the last time you asked somebody to stop using the name Jesus Christ in vain? When was the last time you spoke up when somebody made a joke about your Lord and Savior or about salvation or Christianity, period? When was the last time you spoke up? Do you make a stand do you stand out or do you blend in with their darkness? What do you do? Hmm, I don't care if it's your boss. What do you do? What do you say when you hear them spitting out GD over here and GD over there and GD everywhere? What do you say? Do you say anything? Do you do anything? Hmm. What happens if your job wants you to do something that you know is diametrically opposed to God? What do you do? Do you tell your boss I can't do it because it goes against my father's ways? Or do you do it so you can keep your job? What do you do? What do you say? Do you stand out? Do you stand up for anything? Or do you fall for everything? What do you do? God's not looking for wimps. He's looking for warriors. What do you do? We're living in a world that is so full of darkness, so full of stench. When we walk in the room, there should be an aroma straight from heaven. There should be light in that darkness because it's with us. It's in us. It should be in our fiber. What do you do? Do you cuss just like they do? Or do you stand out in holiness and righteousness? What do you do? When everybody around you is angry, are you at peace? Or are you angry right along with them? What are you doing? If Mama Sita over here is talking to you like you're some kind of crumb under her foot, do you snap back at her or do you sit her down and have a little talk? Get it straight. See, we can blend in with this darkness all we want. But baby, these are the last days. And it's time out for hanging with the mockers of these last times. It's time out for hanging with the ungodly and have, having, uh, having all kind of fellowship with them so we can be liked. It's time out for ha having company over and, and going over their house and everybody in the house is cussing and talking trash. And no, it's time for you to leave. Well, why do you have to leave? Well, sorry, babe. I don't, I don't, I'm not around this. I'm not used to it. it I, you know, you may want to call me holier than thou, but I just, I, it's offensive to me. I got to go. I'm sorry. But thank you for inviting me. Let them know why you got to go. Stand out, y'all. Stand up for what counts. Yeah, you're going to have very few friends doing that because this world hates anybody that stands up for God. But are you ready to be hated? Or are you so hungry to be liked that you will lower your standards to the ground, step over them and cross on over to the other side with them so they will like you because you're so lonely. Hmm, be careful. Don't be compromised to the ways of this world. You cussing like them when you get around them? Are you blending in with the darkness? That's not what God wants. He wants warriors, not wimps. All right. So you have to understand that, yes, we're living in a filthy world. It is filthy, y'all. It's not just dirty. It is filthy, full of stench, full of nastiness, full of chaos, full of hatred, full of prejudice, full of disdain 
disdain, disrespect, not taking responsibility for your actions, everybody pointing the finger, blaming everybody else and God. Where are you in the scheme of things? Where do you stand? Now, for those of you who are standing for Christ, I have a word for you. James chapter 5. James chapter 5. I want you to be encouraged. Verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. Verse 8, be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Verse 11, because I'm trying to stick with the point. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not neither of heaven nor of earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea and your nay be yet be nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he hath committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Verse 16, and I'm done. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. Pat's two cents. Don't backstab each other. Don't talk behind each other's back. Don't whizzy whizzy and cast suspicion. Pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. There's a song that says a world, it, the title of it is A World of Difference. We can make a world of difference with the love of God. We can change this world. We can shine the light that overcomes the darkness, spreading hope across the land, heart to heart and hand in hand. We can make a world of difference with the love of God. In his eyes, there is no color. So we can love each other and learn to give ourselves away. Listen, there's a, a sentence in it that says, let's not look at each other with suspicion, trying to see through each other. I don't want to see through you. In other words, I don't want to look you up and down with my, with, with, uh, uh, acute inspection talking about what's wrong with you. No, I don't want to look through you. I want to see you through, which means together we're going to help each other gain ground in the things of God. Together, we're going to grow stronger. Together, we're going to edify one another, love each other, encourage one another, pray for one another, counsel one another, gird each other up. But we're not going to allow each other to succumb to the ways of this world. No, we're also going to bring each other words of correction to help each other stay on the straight and narrow. Because it's easy to stray in a contaminated environment. So I ask you, as a sister in Christ, be careful that you don't stray. Be careful that you stay in the narrow way. Be very careful, y'all, because in this contaminated world full of the stenches of sin, it's easy to fall. So we must gird each other up, y'all. We must stay closer together. 
How many times do we talk on the phone during the week? How many times do we pray together over the phone? How many times do we counsel and encourage one another? Those of you who are parts of bodies of Christ, who are parts of groups and families and friends that are saved, you need to be girding each other up because what we're actually doing is bathing each other from the stench of this world. We're bathing away, washing away the contaminants of the nastiness of the effects of this sinful world. We've got to do that for each other. We've got to. That's the only way we're going to make it, y'all. So endure until the end and be patient because you know your Lord's coming soon, sooner than we think. God bless you. Be encouraged. In spite of all that's going on around you, you be encouraged here in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.